Welcome to Around the Track with Jeff Gordon. I'm here with Todd Gilliland, driver of the number four Toyota Tundra for Kyle Busch Motorsports. Todd, thanks for joining us today. Thanks for having me. You know, you come from such a lineage. Uh, your father, uh, David Gilliland, raced in the Cup Series many years. Your grandfather, Butch, uh, won championships in the, uh, in the West Series. I'm just curious, what, what kind of pressure did you have as a kid? Did you always know you wanted to race, or did you feel pressure, well, i got to keep this going in the family? No, I definitely get that question a lot. Um, you know, just growing up in a racing family, people think that kind of you're forced to do it, or you feel that pressure, but um, I don't feel like I ever really felt that. Uh, I definitely don't think I'd be doing it if it wasn't what I could put every ounce of my time and effort into, and um, I'd say it's... Uh, Definitely just what I love. I think I was introduced to it early, and that's maybe why I'm in it. But I don't feel like there's any pressure or anything. More of a more of an advantage, I think, to uh, have some experience by my side. Certainly. Um, yeah, they can definitely guide you in the right direction, get, get you kind of jump-started. Well, my understanding of your first car, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, was your dad gave you a pink Barbie electric car? Yeah, I have, I, inside, I have inside information here. You know, you're not getting nothing's getting by. I know everyone's got that inside information, but um, yeah, I guess even when I was younger, jumping anything I can drive, and um, you know, I don't think that's changed at all. So uh, I guess you got to start somewhere. I, I know we uh, added a few batteries, make it a little bit faster. There you I go. I made it paint it black though. So before I could get in it. So, so you never drove it when it was pink. No. Okay, so Got that's okay. That. Hey, Earnhardt, Dale Earnhardt Sr. drove a pink car. That's okay. Um, well, let's talk about the first things that, that, that you drove. What was your first memory of getting behind the wheel of a race car and what age that was? Well, I started racing when I was five um, in quarter midgets. And, but really my first memory is about you know, 11 or 12, my, my last couple of years in quarter midgets, um, racing the, the USAC National Series, won a few national championships that year, um, and then from there, I moved up to late models, which was a big step. Um, you know, most people go to legend cars and, and work their way up a little bit more gradually, but um, it was a lot to learn. And from there, uh, we went, jumped into the K&N series the last few years, uh, raced on the West Coast, got to see a lot of the family history that, that has happened out there at, at places like, um, you know, Kern County, all these great racetracks out there at Irwindale. So, um, and then just jumping up into the, the Camper World Truck Series this year is uh, another big step, but uh, it's been a lot of fun. Well, I, I mean, I've learned through my own experiences, plus seeing other young drivers that have excelled. It, it seems like everyone, not only do they start young like you did, but they, they seem to take these big leaps. And, and, and when you can complete that challenge, I think that's what separates you from, from the competition. Would you, would you agree? Yeah, absolutely. Um, just at KBM, we talk about that a lot with William Byron, how well he adapted. And you know, we keep seeing that. He's moved up. You know, straight from trucks, one year in Xfinity, and now straight to the Cup Series. So um, it's guys like that that really put in the, the effort, um, you know, watching race tape. They say that William Byron's one of the best at that, just being as prepared as he can be uh, when he takes that next step. And uh, But definitely there's got to be some some natural ability that, uh, you know, that allows you to just make that step a little bit easier. So you're a two-time Canaan West Series champion, and, and you did this all, all at, what, like 16 years old? <laughs> Talk us through that. I mean, what does that feel like to be the youngest to accomplish something like that? It's a lot of fun. Um, you know, just going out there. In the K&N series, k and West mostly, there's, you know, the group of younger guys kind of, I feel like I've been racing kind of the same group of people, you know, since I've raced quarter midgets even, Harrison Burton and, and guys like that. But And then there's also the older guys that have been racing k and for five, ten years. So it's a great mix of experience and and also the guys I've been raced against for a long time. So I feel like it's kind of cool to learn what those guys can teach you as well as learn um, what other mistakes other people are making. So now here you are moving up to full-time uh, truck series, which uh, that's a big jump, especially at your age. But tell me about how the beginning of the year you weren't able to race on the mile and a half because you weren't 18 yet. That was rough. Um, just having to go watch the races. Uh, obviously, you hate to miss that experience that your competitors are getting with their crew and you know the drivers, the rookie drivers who haven't been on mile and a half. So they started four races ahead of me on experience. So um, you now all you can do is really go to those races, 
I tried to get uh, you know best paired with my crew chief Marcus Richmond, my whole team, and uh, you know that's what it's about is just uh, you know trying to decrease that learning curve as much as possible. But uh, after we got in the truck, it wasn't wasn't as bad. Tell tell me about driving the truck. We always talk about when we're watching races as fans or those you know in, inside the sport of how exciting the truck races are and put on some pretty wild races. So what's that like driving a truck on these mile and a half? So now that you're, you're, you're 18, you can do that, or maybe at Daytona or Talladega on these super speedways. Yeah, you said it. I think it's definitely a different type of racing, definitely wild races. And uh, you, you just got to always be looking really far ahead. Uh, we've watched plenty of races, and we feel like that's where Kyle Busch makes a lot of his passes is just not being stuck in one place. If he's committed to the high line, he can go to the bottom, and if that's where it needs to be, um, you know, where a lot of younger drivers, I feel like, get stuck in one groove the whole time or, or something like that. So um, it's definitely about putting yourself in good positions throughout the race, uh, racing other cars. It's definitely really tough to pass, uh, being right behind someone without air on your nose and everything. So I think that's the biggest thing, just putting yourself in best position possible. You brought up Kyle. Um, you know, he, he certainly put a lot into this truck team. He's an amazing driver himself. Probably go down, you know, as one of the best, go in the Hall of Fame, and he's a champion in, in everything he's ever gotten behind the wheel of. So, what's that like driving for him? I mean, what kind of involvement and, and interaction do you have with Kyle, uh, you know, as a driver and a, and a car owner? He's actually very involved. Um, you know, some car owners are involved, but they don't really need to be. You know, but where Kyle. When he's involved, you can tell there's a difference, and um, I feel like he's texting our crew chiefs throughout the race, and uh, you know, at Bristol, he was up on the spotter stand talking to me almost every lap, so uh, you know, it's a big difference to have um, a cup champion, like you mentioned, and um, just all-around experienced guy like that uh, in your ear throughout the race. So you're in the running for the rookie of the year. How's that looking? What do you, how do you feel? You feel confident you can get that done this year? I think so. Um, we started four races behind, and I'm only one point behind right now. So uh, I feel like we should be able to get it. Uh, we just barely missed the playoffs um, on points even, missing four races. So I wish we could have got off to a little bit better start. Um, you know, there's a lot of finishes that we didn't capitalize on at the end of the races. And um, you know, that's what we need to do, focus on at the end of the season to, to capture that Rookie of the Year championship. How, what has been your fondest memory uh, this year driving the truck? Has there been one moment that's really stood out to you? I think just when everything's starting to click. Like right now, um, I feel like I've made a lot of mistakes, tore up a lot of cars. and uh, But right now, I feel like our team's getting caught up. We're clicking all on the same level. Our last three or four races, we've been in contention to win and um, even coming down to the last corner. So that's what it's going to be about is just uh, actually finishing off these races. That's where you see Johnny Sauter. If he doesn't have the best truck, he's always there, um, ready to capitalize. And uh, no, I haven't really had a moment like that yet, but when I do, it's going to feel really good. I'm sure there's plenty of those moments coming for you. We'll, we'll go back to when you first started or, or just along the way, like whether it's quarter midgets or late models. Is there is there one race or one season that you can look back on and say, you know, today that, that's been the highlight? I think last year running the, the full Canaan West and full Canaan East all in one year is really busy, and uh, I think we won 10 or 11 races uh, overall, and that just felt really good. Um, Feels good to win. <laughs> yes, always, and um, you know, when stuff starts rolling, it just comes a lot easier. I feel like once you get that first win in any series, it, it definitely becomes easier, and uh, you know, once we break through for that, I feel like the truck can be uh, just the same, but last year was very special. We always talk when we talk about race cars and race car drivers about the focus, the focus that it takes to be at, at your best. You're still a high school uh, senior, and, and you're balancing out school, you're balancing out racing. I mean, how, how do you focus on each of those individually and, and give it 100%, whether you're you know, trying to graduate from high school or, or your next race like you know that's coming up? I think it's just about the effort you're willing to put in. Um, you know, there's a lot of stuff that goes into to racing, especially in high school. You know, uh, school takes up a lot of my time still, and I think it's about the people you, you surround yourself with. Also, um, you know, if you can go to the shop and and be uh, really focused on getting what you have to do get done, and 
um, you can go back, finish your homework, and you know, still be ready for the next day. So I think it's about planning ahead is, uh, is a big thing, but being homeschooled is, is definitely, I feel like, made me more responsible for, uh, for my racing and everything. How about other kids your age? You know, most kids are off, I don't know, going to the beach or whatever they might be doing with their friends. You're a race car driver. When you're interacting with your, your friends at your same age and, and they know that you're going to a racetrack to drive a truck at 190 miles an hour, whatever you may be doing. I mean, what, what's that like? How, how do your friends sort of relate to you or, 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 or interact with you with racing? I feel like growing up in you know, elementary and middle school, they, no one really understood it. You know, they're just, why don't, you have every, why don't you ever have time to hang out with us? Or, you know, you always get that question. But now I feel like they're kind of understanding it, um, that it's a career and that they can watch it on TV. And, you know, just that next step in, in the, the truck series, I feel like makes people understand it a little bit more. But um, I feel like no one really understands the, the time commitment and, uh, you know, just how you're gone every weekend. Some people are gone every weekend, but like you said, it's for vacations or this or that. So uh, it's a lot different, for sure. Yeah, they probably don't realize how much work and effort yeah. is put into it. I'm curious, you know, if, and it sounds to me like you're like 100% racing all the time, but are there any hobbies? Is there anything that you like to do away from racing or, or a hobby that, that maybe does tie to racing? I'd say it's all racing all the time. But, <laughs> I can um, I get that sense I, from you already. When it, just just getting to know you in the short period of time I have, it, it's a hundred percent. But you know, you always take the team out to a go kart track. That's always number one, and um, you know, it's uh, it's basically all there is. Come on, there's got to be something, <laughs> something. When you when, okay, you had you've had a couple weekends off because you know the truck series hasn't been racing. So tell me what. Give me, give me something that you did that, that was non-racing related on one of those off weekends. Well, I mean, we've been golfing a little bit oh, more. Oh, okay. A little See, bit. I I'm pull horrible, it out so we're going to uh, more racing in the golf carts, you know, at the, <laughs> even at the golf course. So, so Now, is this something deal. that you do with your dad? I think your dad's a golfer. Yeah, it used to be. I, well, I've been going with Noah Gregson a lot, but I don't know after Canada if he's going to invite me back. So <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> yeah, that uh, that was pretty intense. Uh, sure. So, so you and you and him, what, what kind of you guys had a friendship before uh, being teammates? Yep, and um, I feel like that's made us really good teammates um, this season at KBM, and uh, that's what it's all about—is just being able to, to overcome that and, uh, and really just put it behind us. And we're still teammates; we still need to work together. And uh, you know, he's got a championship to win, and. Uh, you know, we've got races to win. So. For the record, he left the door open just a little bit. <laughs> I know, for sure. I think trying to look ahead and, and you know, think what would the next step be? I'm assuming you're going to run the truck series again next year, hopefully battle for the championship. But let's look a little further out, three, five years down the road. What, what would Todd Gilliland like to see himself doing five years from now? Well, I'd say, yeah, definitely in the near future is probably going to be another year in trucks, um, trying to get a little bit more mile and a half experience. But uh, five years down the road, um, you never know. I mean, I obviously want to make it to the Cup Series, but, uh, you know, you never know how long that's going to take, how the development's going to go. But uh, I'd say five years is good enough time. We can make it to the Cup Series by then. All right. You heard it right here. Your goal, <laughs> five years being the Cup Series. Now, I'm curious, did you ever race against your dad prior to, to this year? Because you, you've, you've had a couple of races where you've had to race with your dad this year. I'm wondering, what is that like? That's tough. Uh, you know, he, he always acts so calm about it. You know, that it's just another car. He doesn't want to beat me any worse than anyone else. But I feel like when I get around him, I race him a little bit harder. But, uh, <laughs> you know, he, that is what it is. He's just another car. But, um, you know, there's always some rivalry uh, I think from my side only, but, uh, and it even makes me more frustrated. I think when he just, you know, acts like I'm nothing out there. So, <laughs> so hopefully I'll, I'll just keep beating him from now on. That's just a dad's way of, <laughs> of, of trying to take it easy on you. But yeah. I, do, do you feel like there's been times where he took, he take, uh, does he take it easy on you or does he try to teach you lessons or, or test you to see what you're, what you're capable of? I think he does a little bit of both. Um, you know, at some points he definitely teaches me a lesson or um, I'd say in a lot of the races he hasn't been in, he, you know, picks me apart and 
and does all that that uh, you know more of a driver coach does or or a team member. I think that's what he does a really good job of is is separating the the two when he gets to a racetrack of being a dad and being more of a driver coach. So uh, I think that's what's helped me a lot over the last two to three years is is him being able to really give me advice in a way that I can actually get better from it. Well, you got an excellent coach there. If he's your driver coach, watch out. Who, who would you say has been the biggest motivator, the biggest inspiration for you in your racing career? I'd say probably my dad, just being around him. And, um, you know, I was never around him really when he was in, you know, late models or Xfinity when he won that one race. And I was never around him when he was really winning a lot of races. And, um, you know, just to be able to get back to seeing him in a truck where he can be really competitive and um, just having him go test with me and, and realizing how smart he really is, is um, and what it actually takes to get to the Cup Series in general uh, is uh, probably one of the biggest motivators, I think. Well, Todd, thanks for being here and sharing some great stories. Uh, Exalt is really proud to be partnered with you and Kyle Butch Motorsports this year and wish you all the best. Have a great season. It's been a lot of fun. Thank you.